How's it going guys? So today's a big day. We're gonna be harvesting corn silage and filling these two big silos that we built earlier this year. Uh, the one on the end there we filled in the spring with uh, spring forage. Never put corn silage in these silos before. The feed should be ready to cut. We need some good dry feed on the bottom of these so we don't squeeze a bunch of juice out of it. The custom crew is on the way right now so I need to meet them over at the first field. First I'm gonna spread some plastic out on the ground for the blower. They'll be getting here soon with the blower, hooking it up to this silo. This was just a piece of plastic from the end of an ag bag that we made last year. I'm gonna head to the other farm now with the inoculant for the chopper. We got the inoculant in this jug, two gallons worth. So it's a live bacteria that's gonna help the crop to ferment properly in the silo. So this is the corn that's gonna be going on top of the silos. It's got a little more moisture in it, a little bit greener. We're gonna go over and start with the dry stuff. Chopper's pulling over the hill. So this is our first field we're gonna chop. This I'd say is one of our worst fields. It's just a little three acre patch. It's pretty rocky. So not the most impressive corn to start, but it's gonna get nicer later. So we hire a custom crew to do our harvesting. They run a Klaus Jaguar 850. This is our first year not doing a bunker silo in 20 years. And with bunker silos, we were always shooting for about 65 to 70% moisture level. This year, out of these big silos, we needed about 55% moisture on the bottom. And then up towards the middle, we can be at 60% or 65 at the top. We just had to be a little more patient. This field's kind of weedy. This is probably gonna be a little higher moisture because of all the weeds in this area. Not sure why I don't have good weed control in this part of this field. So this is a 93 day corn, which is a very short season for what we normally grow. Normally grow 114, 115 day corn. We wanted this stuff to mature earlier and dry out for us. So we'd have drier stuff on the bottom. If you're new to the channel, we're making corn silage here. That's the main ingredient in our dairy cow ration. And what we're doing is we're cutting this entire stalk about eight, 10 inches off the ground and just chopping the whole thing up. So you're getting that stalk, the leaves, as well as the ear. So we're getting energy and we're getting fiber. Everything's mixed together. When we were deciding to build these big silos, one concern we had was how dry you have to put the feed in at the bottom of the silo. Is it gonna feed as well to the cows? Are they gonna like it? and do as well on it, because this definitely looks a bit on the dry side. You worry about the digestibility. Talking to different farmers that run big silos, they seem to not really see a big difference when they get down to the bottom of the silo and feed that dry stuff. Probably gonna be a learning curve to see what type of variety of corn we should be growing for the bottom, how dry exactly we have to have it. This first year we were hoping to air on the drier side so we don't juice these silos too bad as we're learning. I'm back at the farm, we just got the blower hooked up. We got a camera up on the unloader so we can monitor things. The unloader's in fill mode right now, so it's just slowly rotating. That's the distributor there in the middle. Feed's gonna come down above that. It's just gonna be slowly spinning and throwing the feed in a circle. There comes the first cart. So they run a field line blower, and they have a power unit on it. It's 240 or 250 horsepower. We never wanted to chop feed this dry going into the bunker silos because we wouldn't be able to get it to pack. It would just be too fluffy and you need that moisture in there to pack it. The thing with these big silos is it packs so hard that's why you have to get it dry like this. The 
main thing that chopper does is it has knives cutting everything up, but it also has a big set of metal rollers. And the purpose of that is just to crush the kernels because the cows can't digest the whole kernel, it'll just pass right through their system. It says you're supposed to see two or less half kernels and no whole kernels. That would be considered good processing. Um, because this corn's so mature, kernels are pretty hard, so it's gonna be interesting to see how well we can process it. So there's a half kernel, I would say. This corn has a lot of grain in it. I wouldn't consider this ideal processing, but I think we're gonna be okay. There's a lot of small pieces of kernels in here, finding some halves. I think it's just because of how hard the kernels are. Normally we're chopping with a little bit of milk still in the kernels and those will crush a little easier. The nice thing is this stuff's in the bottom of the silo. It's gonna be sitting in there for five months or so until we're feeding it. So that's gonna give it time to soften those kernels up and for them to ferment a little bit. The greenest stuff we have at the top should be a little easier to process. I don't think we're gonna be able to do much better than this. He has a machine set as tight as he can. The variety of corn we grew, this is red tail corn and it's designed to have a pretty uh, flowery kernel, a little bit more digestible kernel in it. That should help us too. Kind of a softer starch in there even though these kernels are pretty mature. See the job the distributor is doing. As it's rotating, throwing it against the wall, it's gonna give you even packing and just a more consistent filled silo. The beauty of these upright silos versus the bunker silos is we're taking advantage of gravity to do the packing. With our bunks, we always had to drive back and forth all day packing the feed. I'm gonna run a coster test on some of this now to see what the moisture is. I'll just put 100 grams in this basket. Then we'll cook all the moisture out of it. The carts are coming in around nine tons or a little bit more. So when we were filling bunker silo at 68% or something, they're about 12 and a half tons. It's probably around 50% moisture or maybe the low 50s. At this point, my job's pretty easy. Just checking in on this camera every once in a while, make sure it's still rotating. This really dry stuff at this farm, 30 acres of it. We're gonna put 15 acres in the bottom of both silos. So they're about to switch over to the other one and then we'll start working into more of the green corn. So that first sample came back 51% dry matter or 49% moisture. We wanted to air on the dry side, we're at 50%, so 55 would probably be okay. Just switched over to the other silo now. Probably fill the other silo about full and then come back to this one with some a little bit greener stuff. Oh, we're up a good uh, 40 feet up or something right now.
Just got a little bit of green on these leaves. I think we probably would have been safe to chop this last week. Got finished with that 93 day corn. Now they're switched over to another field. This next variety we're moving into is 105 day corn. This field's got some nice ears on it. Now that stalk had less competition, there's a big gap there, but still, it's decent looking corn. They're almost done at that other field, and the plan now is to move home to this stuff right here. This is 114 day corn. I guess I'm not quite convinced this stuff is going to be dry enough yet. We're going to start chopping it and see how it acts. So I've been to stalk over. Definitely some moisture coming out of there still. We want some moisture, but it can't be a crazy amount. It's not too bad, but the silo is not even half full, so this is going to be taken up like three-fifths of the silo and that's a lot of tonnage even the bottom of that three-fifth needs to be fairly dry so I don't know worst case scenario if we think it's a little too wet we can tell them to come back in a few days the silo can just sit and wait They've been running four carts all morning and now they're going to switch to three because we're at the home farm. The first couple carts that came off this field at home, seems like it's dry enough. It's a little greener but the moisture isn't really showing any higher. At this point I think we're going to keep chopping. I'm going to check how full this silo is getting. It's about 20 rings from the top. That is not supposed to happen. I don't know what just happened. Plugged the pipe. They were going fine and then all of a sudden stalled the engine off. So I don't know what that's about. I'm gonna take this mallet up through and hit on the pipe.
not sure why it was plugging up there. I guess their blower was set, let a little too much in, plugged the blower up somehow. Pipe wasn't really plugged other than the stuff at the very bottom. Everything looks good up here. We decided that 114 day variety is just a little bit too wet yet. Kind of changed plans now. They switched over to more of this 105 day corn we have planted down this way. My thinking was to put this stuff in the other silo, but might get one filled today and then leave the other one to finish the end of the week. When you look at these fields, they look like they're getting dry, but you start chopping them and they, they just seem greener than you expect. Still in this 105 day corn. I think we're gonna switch back over to the water corn again soon. It's just up in the silo. There's about 40 foot from the top, so I wouldn't be afraid to put a little bit of water corn in now. So I'm gonna give him this inoculant. He's about out. You can actually see the feed now at the fourth door down from the top. It gets close to the top, but then it doesn't get full because you keep adding weight and it just keeps settling and packing more and more. There you can see the feed piling up right there. We're only a couple of rings from the top actually. It's like three rings. Well, 
lights were getting pretty cool. The lights are pretty nice. We're going to need to raise the unloader a little bit now. We can go a little higher with it. Alright, that's good. Hold it there. Now we're going to throw two more carts in this one. And we're going to switch to a different field in the other silo. We are almost done for today. Back into the silo we started on. We put 20 loads of the real dry stuff in the bottom. Now we're putting some of this semi-dry stuff on top of that. And then we're gonna be done because we got no more dry corn. So we topped off that first silo there, and what we're gonna do is come back to that silo later in the week, we'll put some more feed on top of it. Just gonna let it settle a little bit. Okay, that's gonna be it for tonight. So it's the next morning. Last night we finished up right about eight o'clock. So this silo was completely full last night, and then we switched over to that one and just put a little bit more corn in that one. We wanted to make sure we weren't gonna see a bunch of juice in this silo before we had confidence to keep harvesting. Got out here this morning, and we're not seeing any silage juices running from this silo at all. One pipe right there that would let liquid out if there was inside. If you juice it bad enough, you'll have stuff coming out of the doors, coming out the doors up in the middle of the silo. And I'm not seeing anything coming down the chute there. One thing we have to be careful with, especially with silos, is the gases that come off the feed after you harvest. When we do go to cover these silos, we're gonna wanna do it right away as soon as we're done harvesting, because it's the next morning. In, uh, in about 12 hours, you can see what's happening now at this chute. Just got a steady flow of gas coming out of there. I'm going to climb up the outside now, and I want to see how much this silo settled. We're going to have to add some feed to it. We want to top it off in a couple days. Should be a good amount of space up there by now. We did 116 cart loads yesterday. I'm happy with how much the silos are holding. The yields have been kind of mediocre. Uh, the grain I think is there. We had a lot of grain in the corn. It's just the stalks were not as big as they could have been I think this year. I think we're going to have good feed. There's going to be a lot of grain in it, a lot of starch, but we're going to look to buy some corn from the neighbors I think to make sure we get these silos full. All right, let's climb up here. Whew. It's good exercise. So now I'm going to open this up. I'm going to hold my breath when I open this just to make sure. These gases are heavier than regular air so they like to lay low. Last night that pile was right up to the unloader, now we're 20 feet below, so yeah, we'll definitely be able to put a good amount more in the silo, we'll try to get some decently wet stuff for the top. We got almost everything cut at home, there's a little bit of a three corner field down the lane. All this is taken off, we have just under 20 acres between those two fields right there across the road, and then we have a rented farm that's got BMR corn over there, It'll be right around 48, 49 acres of corn left. That's all going to easily fit into the other silo there, and I think there's going to be room to spare still. Uh, we have a neighbor we were talking to. He's almost a mile down the road. He's got some corn he could sell to us, so we're going to go scout that a little bit today. Yeah, we just want to make sure we have enough feed till next year. See the soybean fields are all drying up. We'll be looking to combine those in a few weeks, I think. Overall, it went well. We were trying to air on the dry side, and I think we were successful with that. Hopefully we get good feed out of them. I think we will. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.